Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, you all look fantastic today. Especially you, right there, in the front row. That could be any of you. I have no clue where you're sitting, what you look like, <laughs> because I'm talking to a camera. My name is Zach. Uh, I'm 22 years old. I just graduated, like, recently from Aquinas College. So maybe you recognize me from seeing me around. You probably don't. Um, but I'm so excited to be here with you all today, coming to you live from my apartment, from in front of a camera, which isn't all that foreign to me. Um, I make videos very similar to this on a YouTube channel called Faith Lifestyle Movement, talking about my faith journey, uh, prayer and spirituality, and uh, stuff about about this journey that we're on. So if over the course of this, once I'm done talking to you, you're like, oh, Zach, you, what you said really just reached my heart in a particular way. You can, you can peruse that uh, on your own time at your own leisure if you so choose. But I'm pumped to come to you today to talk to you on what is a very important day for you preparing for the sacrament of confirmation. Now, I, first of all, um, am from a foreign land called Wisconsin, and in my home parish back in, in Wisconsin, uh, we didn't get confirmed until my junior year of high school. So you all are way ahead of the game. Uh, you are, you're closer to receiving the sacrament than I was. At this point in my life, when I was in your age, I wasn't even thinking about confirmation, let alone uh, being prepared to receive the sacrament, which is an amazing and beautiful thing because the sacrament of confirmation, whether you uh, leave the church that day feeling like you could run through a brick wall or whether you feel no different than when you walked in the church that day, you will be sealed with the Holy Spirit. You will receive the gifts, the grace of God through the Holy Spirit, and you will be transformed through the sacrament, whether you feel it or not. And that's an amazing and beautiful thing. And I'm so excited for you to receive that. Um, and in my confirmation prep, one of the most important and meaningful and impactful parts of it for me was on a retreat of sorts and being introduced to Eucharistic adoration, which is what you're all about to go into next after I'm done talking to my camera here and talking to you all. And it's a beautiful experience of prayer and one that changed my life 100% and something that is still such a crucial part of my day-to-day -day life. I'm excited for you to take part in it, whether you maybe have before, whether you haven't. Maybe I'll give a brief explanation. Eucharistic adoration. So we have Eucharist, uh, which is that, that bread, that consecrated bread that uh, during the Mass is consecrated and transformed into the body of Jesus Christ. Those little hosts that we consume in communion during um, the Eucharist, that Mass. And adoration, we adore uh, that, that Eucharist. We love and we worship and we respect and venerate it. So how that, how that appears, you'll be sitting in the pews. And then someone will approach the tabernacle, that shiny gold box uh, in the back or in the, in the front, right front and center of the church. They'll open it and receive the, the leftover consecrated hosts from Mass, the Eucharist. They'll take one out, bring it over to the altar, and place it in a shiny gold display called the Monstrance, uh, which isn't like uh, like monster the way the way that the word sounds. Uh, it comes from a, a Latin word, which means to show. Um, so, which is what it's doing. It's a golden display to show the Eucharist to us. So the Eucharist will be in the monstrance on the altar, and then it will be a time of prayer before the Eucharist, before the Blessed Sacrament exposed on the altar. And maybe you knew all that. Maybe you've been there before, uh, and maybe you have experienced that. And maybe you knew all that, and, and wonderful. I'm, I'm glad that if you have. Uh, but I think it's important to note that uh, from an outside perspective, like if, if, we, if we step back from the mystery of it all for a moment, uh, it's, it seems like an odd thing, right? And you may even be thinking that. That if, if without faith, 
in Jesus Christ, in the mystery and the sacraments that Jesus has given to us, um, it appears that we are worshiping a piece of bread, right? But Jesus introduced to us in a profound and meaningful way, in a way that that we speak, that the priest speaks into existence at every mass, the way that we remember that at the Last Supper, Jesus said, take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body. That that bread, what appears to be bread in the monstrance on the altar, we know in the sacramental mystery, in this beautiful tradition of the Catholic faith, that that bread which appears as bread, is transformed, fully transformed in its substance to the body of Jesus Christ. So in Eucharistic adoration, in this time that you will spend in the church, Jesus Christ himself will be present to you, with you, on the altar. As if he was just sitting right there. For you to gaze at him and for him to gaze at you. And what a beautiful thing that is. We are not, we're not simply worshiping a piece of bread in a shiny gold display, but Jesus Christ, God himself, will be present with you in the church for you to look at him, for him to look at you there on the altar. That is such a beautiful thing, and it was, it was so beautiful and so meaningful and still is for me. And this is my story of the first time that I... Uh, that I experienced Eucharistic adoration. It was uh, a few months before my confirmation. So in my junior year of high school, I was at kind of a, a youth rally day in Wisconsin. There was, it was fairly large. There's uh, some hundreds of other teenagers, which was pretty cool. It was a full day of, of some events. And towards the end of the day, they had a time of Eucharistic adoration. Uh, and there was a band who, who played some uh, praise and worship music during the time of adoration. And I remember being there a particular way in that moment in Eucharistic adoration. They played the song, How He Loves, which I had never heard the song before. And it is now and forever will be my favorite song. I remember standing there, gazing up at the altar, listening to the words of that song, hearing how he loves us. I remember having this feeling of warmth, this unexplainable abiding warmth in my chest. This, this feeling almost of like floating, this feeling of peace, this feeling of comfort, this warmth in my chest that I couldn't quite place, but I knew that it was coming from that thing on the altar. That mysterious bread, because heck, at that point, I still did not understand what that was. It, it could have been just bread to me. But I knew that that was where it was coming from. And of course, now I know the mystery of that bread that is Jesus Christ himself. But it goes even deeper than that. And my experience as I left that day was a desire to know what that was. What was that warmth, that abiding peace, that, that fulfilling feeling that I had? What was that? Where was that coming from? And a few months later, uh, I happened upon, uh, it was after my confirmation at this point, I happened upon a copy of the book called The Catechism of the Catholic Church, which is this big old book that says about everything that the church does and teaches. Um, very lengthy, but very important book. And right at the beginning, one of the first few pages, it says this. I'm going to read this quote to you, which explained everything for me. It said, The desire for God is written in the human heart because man is created by God and for God. And God never ceases to draw man to himself. And only in God will he find the truth and the happiness he never stops searching for. And to paraphrase that, to simplify that, what exactly does that mean? My friends, we spend our lives grasping for something that's going to fill us up. 
something that's going to make us whole, that's going to bring us some kind of lasting happiness, some kind of lasting joy, some kind of affirmation or belonging or love, and everything else fades. Everything in our life, everything that you seek out, that you try to find that fulfilling happiness in, will pass away because there's one thing. There's one love that you're made for. You are specifically designed for. You and I, our hearts are made to be filled with the one love that is God. The God who is love made you and me for the love that is God. We are specifically designed for God's love. And that was what that warmth was. It was my heart. It was my being coming face to face with the thing that I was made for. And being filled with the fulfilling love that I was created for. And in that moment, I was introduced to that which my heart had been longing for all my life and will forever long for the love of Jesus Christ. And that is what we are what we encounter in Eucharistic adoration in a profound and meaningful way, coming face to face, heart to heart, in an encounter with the love that we were made for in Jesus Christ. So I hope that as you go into this time of prayer, this time of Eucharistic adoration, however you decide to spend it, I hope that you keep that in mind of what is going on before you. Even if you don't understand it, because my first time I didn't. I, I didn't understand the mystery of how can it look like bread, but be Jesus? You don't have to understand the mystery, because that's faith. But be present to it. And believe that Jesus is there. As you gaze upon him, he gazes upon you. And maybe just imagine that where that bread is, where the monstrance is, on the altar Imagine Jesus sitting there, maybe his, his legs dangling off the side of the altar with a smile on his face, gazing at you as you look at him, wanting to be your friend, wanting you to pour out your heart to him, desiring to love you so much. And would you let him love you and love him back as he sits there looks at you, looks you in the eyes, places his hand on your heart, and says, my beloved child, welcome home. I hope it's a meaningful experience for you. And congratulations as you prepare for your confirmation. I hope that it is a spiritually filling day for you and that you go boldly into your new life, the fullness of faith, filled with the Holy Spirit, to be disciples of Jesus Christ in the world.